Hey guys, welcome to the second example of uh, permanent imposed actions. Now, this example is going to differ a bit from the first one because the slab is going to behave like a two-way slab. The previous slab behaved like a one-way slab. This way, it's going to behave like a two-way slab. So it's going to change up the process a bit, okay? So I recommend you watch this video. It's going to help a bit. But essentially, we're calculating very similar things to the previous one. Permanent imposed actions in slab, permanent imposed actions in interior beam B1, permanent imposed actions on girder B2, B3, permanent imposed actions on column C1 on a typical floor, okay? So here's a plan of our structure. We have these girders, these exterior beams. <clears throat> um, we have these columns. We have something called a shear core, which we're going to discuss now. And we have slabs, okay? So this is essentially hollow in the center. It might be like an elevator shaft or something like that. And we have this shear core, which is a wall surrounding it and we have all these slabs in the structure, okay? So eventually our goal, so look here, we're trying to find imposed actions on interior beam B1, that beam over there, um, imposed and in permanent actions on B2, B3, so that's B2's over there, B3's over there, and then we're gonna use all that information to work out the permanent imposed actions on column one, C1 over there. Just some information, uh, the superimposed dead load is 1.5 kPa, it's a 10-story building. The top of slab to uh, top of slab height is 3.5 meters. The slab is 150 mils thick. All beams are 300 wide, 500 deep, including the slab thickness. Columns are 350 by 350. Density of concrete is 2,500 kilograms per meter cubed, and the gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, so um, even though all all the beams are the same dimensions, 300 by 500. I'm still denoting B1, B2, B3 is different. Even though they're technically all the same, we're going to make them different, okay? Um, it might not be so obvious now, but when we go into the actual example, you'll see why it's important to distinguish B1, B2, and B3. So what we're going to do, just to show you what a section would look like, so a typical section AA would be this beam.